So for really more than two years now, we've been complaining about, and we think it's justified, the fact that the US Congress has held thousands, tens of thousands of hours of closed circuit camera footage from the public. They have not released any of it um, from January 6th. And January 6th, of course, is a transformative event in this country. It's been used to change the country. So there are about 44,000 hours. Uh, and we have, you may have read this today, been granted access to that. And we believe that access is unfettered. We believe we have secured the right to see whatever we want to see. Um, so we've been there about a week. Our producers, some of our smartest producers have been there uh, looking at this stuff and trying to figure out what it means and how it contradicts or not the story that we've been told for more than two years. We think already that in some ways it does contradict that story. And so we're going to spend the rest of this week taking a look at it, assessing it as honestly as we can, and we're going to bring you what we find next week. Tucker Carlson and his smartest producers are sifting through about 40,000 hours of footage from January 6th. Uh, it was provided to them by one Kevin McCarthy, Speaker of the House, Republican Party leader in Congress there. And uh, if you're wondering, hey, yo, so he must have provided this to a bunch of folks and Tucker Carlson and his smartest producers are looking through it themselves. You'd be wrong, it was only provided to Tucker Carlson and his smartest producers to sift through it and determine based off of what they believe and the things that they tell their audience. Keep in mind the news that we heard just at the end of last week about what this all means and the stuff that's involved. I'm sure they'll have a, a nice uh, fair story about this whole thing. This is the same guy who did things like this. Let's look at the Washington Post article on this. The decision by McCarthy to provide the video to Carlson raised questions about whether the release of the footage would force the US Capitol Police to change the location of security cameras and why the speaker would give the material to a Fox News host who has peddled conspiracy theories about the attack and not share with other news organizations. That's strike number one in my book. First thought is what is it he's seeing? What angles are they seeing of things? And also these security camera footages, they know about what it was about. And maybe they can even share with other folks. Who knows who? Kev McCarthy's like, that's fine. It's Tucker Carlson. I trust him with, I guess, these types of, uh, this type of sensitive information. Uh, by the way, like I mentioned, the stuff happened from last week. This is Tucker Carlson, some of these emails and texts that happened talking about the quote unquote stolen election and the things that led to January 6th. The footage that he's looking through right now, I'm sorry, and his smartest producers are looking through. Remember this, after January 6th tried to thread the needle between the truth and pressure from his viewers and sponsors became even more difficult. Late on January 6th, Carlson texted with Pfeiffer that Trump is a quote demonic force, a destroyer, but he's not going to destroy us. Hmm, it's weird, because he added that Trump is good at destroying things. He's the undisputed world champion of that. He could easily destroy us if we play it wrong. Did you hear anything about how he said if we tell the truth? He said if we play it wrong. So they're playing with real life uh, uh, events of January 6th. Do you think they're gonna play with the footage that they got exclusive access to? See if you can figure it out from the way he talked about uh, what happened on January 6th versus what he was saying behind the scenes on January 6th, watch. Tonight we want to premiere a trailer for a documentary we've been working on for about six months. It's about January 6th. We believe that it answers a lot of the remaining questions from that day. Our conclusion, the US government has in fact launched a new war on terror. But it's not against Al Qaeda, it's against American citizens. War on terror is here, is coming after half of the country. The helicopters have left Afghanistan, and now they've landed here at home. And the left is hunting the right, staking them in Guantanamo Bay for American citizens, leaving them there to rot. These are the things he was uh, releasing to his audience while behind the scenes he was saying things like this. Let's go to the uh, graphic five though, jump to that really fast you guys. Because Tommy Firth texted Ron Mitchell, one of the Fox executives responsible for overseeing Laura Ingram's show who was also uh, promoting this type of stuff. And then behind the scenes talking about how ridiculous it was. Firth bluntly captured the dilemma, quote, this Dominion stuff is gonna give me an effing aneurysm. As many times as I've told Laura, it's BS, she S posters and uh, and Trump tweeting about it. Hmm, 
Weird how that works, because he's gonna give someone an aneurysm for all those lies. Carlson then told his producer, Alex Pfeiffer, maybe one of the smart ones is looking through all this footage. Sidney Powell is lying, effing bitch, he says. Did he include that in his three part documentary series about January 6th and political prisoners and how unfair things are towards Donald Trump and MAGA? Did he say that out loud or did he say it behind the scenes? And what will he say after he goes through all this exclusive footage from Kevin McCarthy, who of course is looking to do this to make himself look better, and maybe deflect more of the lies, or I'm sorry, promote some of those lies. So again, sometimes even Tucker Carlson says these things on air on accident about his lies and the things that they believe. Let's watch this. It is it is an affront to the Constitution and every single American. And we should all be raising hell about this because it is our future, the future of the world that's at stake. I agree. I mean, how much weed are people smoking? This this is a real issue. This is not one of the fake it issues, is. you know, that we there, we there is no out. more real issue than this. Oh, I agree. Did you hear the back end of that? He goes, This is one of those real issues, not those fake ones that we in case you missed a watch that part. I mean, how much weed are people smoking? This this is a real issue. This is not one of the fake it issues, is. you know, that we There, we there is no out. more real issue than this. Oh, I agree. Whoopsies. Adrian, what's your thoughts here? <laughs> is this gonna uh, first off, do you expect anything uh, of any reputable nature out of this or another three part documentary series? I think Tucker Carlson was kind of um, you know, giving us a tell there that he might have been smoking weed, which is why he was almost <laughs> about to tell the truth about them network manufacturing all sorts of stories. This just really shows that Fox News has an agenda and it isn't about news. It's not even providing news necessarily with a skew to it as much as it is manufacturing controversy, manufacturing fear mongering and all of these things that will continue to push people to the right. And you know, having these text messages come out, especially with regard to Dominion voting, this is the stuff we've been waiting for in terms of this lawsuit, because we knew discovery would happen and we'd get to see the extent of the lies that went on inside of Fox. And now that we have that, the thing is you'd think this would be enough for its viewers to actually you know, wise up, but I don't necessarily <laughs> know that that will actually be the case. It's amazing, I'm waiting for that too, but I'm not expecting it. Or at least I'm waiting for the excuse as to why that's not gonna be the next step. And I think I've, it was, you can't trust anything from Twitter because who knows who's behind some of these. But I've seen some of the comments are like, by the way, Fox is still number one and this and that. It's like, you don't realize that that's not the flex that you think it is. You're the reasons why if Fox is still number one going into the future that they are lying to you and calling you an effing idiot. I guess if you're willing to accept that, that's who you are. And by the way, I want to point out something, a side note on this, because Kevin McCarthy, other Congress people, conservatives were upset about the OAN and I think DirecTV, I can't remember if it was DirecTV or Dish, but I believe it was DirecTV and the, and them eventually severing those ties because of the bad business dealings and just broke, it fell apart. And how much they were talking about how OAN is absolutely needed on our airwaves, this is censorship and all this. The degree to which he is so on, these politicians are so on the on on the uh, the discussions about whether or not these conservative networks are on television is just so they can continue to promote their BS. And this is just one of those examples. He goes, I've got Tucker Carlson. I'll toss information to him that I won't give to anyone else as a representative of United States citizens. He doesn't care. He represents himself. And apparently, Tucker Carlson and his damn show. That's what our politicians are not doing. The top guy in Congress for the Republicans. He works for Fox News, and he's apparently one of those smart producers for Tucker Carlson's show. So I guess expect that BS to come out. I guess you won't see it on OAN though.